Hi, well I'm here to make a very special video about my childhood. Uh, on the playground, there were different little toys that were around that really, that were really kind of intrusive onto my my uh, later life as, a, as an adult. Some of those were monsters in my pockets, which were the coolest sidekicks to ever have as a five-year-old, like five to ten-year-old. Little coloured plastic sort of monsters that you could just keep anywhere and then get them out whenever you need them. If someone's having an argument with you, you could just slam them on the table and be like, fuck you. Slap bracelets. You know the slap bracelets I'm talking about, those little sort of metal things that when you hit them hard, they kind of circle up and go around your wrist properly. Uh, it was really good to smash on your mate's arm when he nicked your favourite colouring pencil, though, because as soon as he took that, he could be like, right, I'm going to get him. As soon as he's using, Susan, like, your special royal blue pencil, pow! He's not going to fucking nick that again, is he? Um, you had things like Mighty Max... Uh, and Polly Pockets, which, to be honest, was every miniature painter's true start in the field, field of role-playing. Miniatures were always very good as a kid because it was always smaller than you and they were really nice to touch. And it was just fun. It was just fun stuff. You also had Tazos, which were little plastic discs with little cutouts out of the side. And you didn't really use them for much except for to put, to put them all, like, link them all together to make a really big throwing star that you could fire and or throw over across the room to Fat John, who was nicking your lunch out of a lunchbox while he thought no one was looking whilst he was bullying the smaller kids. Well, I did that. Well, fuck you, Fat John. Fuck you. You also had those Corinthian football figures that were little England players and with massive, massive heads, which were like tiny little statues to remind us all of England's terrible performance throughout the years. They're like tiny little pieces of failure. They were pointless, but every kid had them, and it was really annoying because everyone wanted Gary Lineker. And Tamagotchis. My mum wouldn't let me have a dog at the time, but a ta Tamagotchi was apparently good enough because I wasn't grown up enough to look after an animal. Well, mine is still going at 28 years, and it's still going strong. You had things like Crazy Bones, which were terribly addictive little pieces of plastic that were like done like little monsters, and you... you they didn't have a use except for they would just be massive in your pocket and then you could put them on a 30 centimetre ruler like pivoted over a lunchbox so you could stick it on and then just slam it down and you can ping them across the room try and hit someone in the face it was really good for that sort of trebuchet effect what else did you have? you had Pokemon cards as well which was they were awesome Pokemon cards right the art was fantastic you, you always used to get your mum and dad to try and buy you some of these Pokemon gar cards but it seems to be like that Pokemon cards as a game was the thing that everyone loved and no one knew how the fuck to play. The true king of the playground, no matter what it was, other than LA Gear shoes, because LA Gear shoes are the king of prepubescent footwear and the only true signal that your parents loved you more than non-owners' parents loved them. Other than those, the only true toy was Pogs. Pogs are possibly the greatest, the greatest thing known to man. All they are is the little circles of cardboard. You all must know this. You all must know this. But what you do is you get little circles of cardboard. If you're really lucky, you've got a little playing mat, right? You've got a little playing mat, which I'll stick here. Let me move closer to the camera. This one's not straight because this one, let me just show you this. This one came out of something I found at a car boot sale, which was genius, which is the 100% authentic Pog, the board game. Now, that sounds a lot better than what it actually is. Because the Pog board game was the game that you played in the playground, except you had like a, a mat. You had a mat and a board. I don't have the board to hand because it's over the other side of the room. And you'd open it up and you'd play Pogs and try and steal all your mates' other bit like discs of plastic. But they came in all different little things. Let me let me find the centre frame here. They come in all little different artworks with this little hairy dude that looked like a really nasty sort of short Neanderthal Chewbacca. And just loads of really cool stuff. But how you would play it is you would get loads of these. I don't know if I played it right, but I'm pretty sure this is what it was. Because I played it face down. But apparently you're supposed to play them face up. But I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to damage the pictures on the front. But what you do is you get a massive pile of these joyous discs and drop them everywhere. So you get a little pile and you put them face down. That's how, you, that's how you'd have them. And then you'd get... Whenever you bought like packs of Pogs, I can't remember how many you got in there, it was probably only like five or six, but sometimes, but no I don't know if it was every time, but sometimes anyway you got a slammer, which was a little plastic disc, and then you got like, there was the really thick slammers as well that had like little, like teeth around the around the edges, right, they had like little teeth going round, and you could, you got metal ones as well, so you could really destroy 
your mates like pogs in the playground like you could just literally be like oh yeah that's a nice looking pog there I'll play you for it and they would always like no 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 and you get like your tiny little plastic slammer out and they'd be like and you eventually you'd be able to co coax them around and say look okay I'll play it for no, I'll play you for them they're like oh okay and then you get that little I don't I don't have one but you get like a little plastic tub and you'd always get the metal slammer out and you could practically hear them sweat right you could hear them but this was a big thing for me. This is what started a minor gambling addiction, which I don't actually have, I might add. But it started me wanting to get other people's pogs, and you know, I didn't mind losing them, but I didn't mind winning them because it was all good. It was all good fun. It was, it was eventually banned in my school as well. I don't know why, other than the fact that it's probably because it resulted in fist fights sometime. And if you haven't seen two six-year-olds fight, it's quite funny, right? I was there, but it's still quite funny, and uh. So what you do is you put it on there, you get your slammer and you'd hit it and whatever lands face up, you get to keep. So this is an awkward angle because of the way I've got this, I'm going to tell you, this is my, my desk, whereas my monitor is there, that's my monitor, and there's my second monitor, you've probably seen it from the podcast, it kind of comes from this direction, but this is all I've got, but I've got the camera which is on the mic arm on the top, so I'm going to try with one tiny feeble slammer, we're going to try and see how many we get, and I'm probably going to knock the arm so I'm sorry. One. So I would get one on there. I'm pretty sure, if I remember rightly, that every time that you slammed, you had to put one on. So every time that you wanted to go, you had to put a, sl a, a pog on. But then the next person would go using a different slammer. Let's try and find... Yeah, it's Blue Skull. Little Blue Skull one. He's cool, isn't he? Whip. All officially branded in the uh, pog board game, which I fucking hope so as well. So... None. So that guy just lost out, and he's also lost his top pog that he put on. But you would keep going backwards and forwards, and it would start fights, it would start wars, it would start your parents calling up the other person's parents, or them calling you, saying that someone was bullying the other person when we weren't. We weren't bullying, it was playground games. And it was much better than those slap bands. Because those slap bands caused some serious damage, whereas this only caused emotional damage, which I think that everyone does get over at some point in their life. So we're going to try with... Red Tribesman, and I'm obviously really crap at this game, as you've seen. Um, we'll do another one. See, this game is impossible, but as a, as a five-year-old, you, you threw it down with all your might, whereas now I'm really conscious that I'm going to throw it and it's going to rebound to my TV and this cost me a lot of money, so that's why I'm not throwing it like a five-year-old, but in the playground, I can guarantee you I did. And if anyone tells you that Pogs are not the king of toys, they are wrong, and I would demand... I would demand that you get them to come speak to me because Pogs are genius. Uh, I'm currently looking at a lot of job lots of Pogs on eBay. Not because I want them, not because I'm trying to start another a craze in playgrounds. I'm, I'm definitely not going to playgrounds. But I'm, I'm not trying to start this, but this brings a lot of nostalgia for me. Because I always had one of those little plastic tubes and I'd take that with me and then it got to two tubes. And then the Sunday market that we had, which was basically... It was just a market with loads of stores. It's like a car boot sale, but it was every Sunday, but it had like slightly bigger sort of business stores there. And they would sell like knockoffs, and there was like knockoff slammers that were metal, and there was like moving bits inside. You had one things that would look like pogs that actually weren't. And I tell you, actually, now I remember, I tell you what the one of the best inventions that happened uh, to pog, well, that, that pog brought out, was I, don't, I had one, I don't know where it is now, and I think it's upstairs in my mum's loft, but it was like, you could make your own pogs, you basically, you, you had like, adhesive strips, adhesive plates, and you would cut out pictures in magazines or something, and you would put it over, over the, you know, the, the cutout, and you would put it into this machine, and you'd cut it out, and you'd make your own pogs, so, you know, you could sit there and be like, well, I've got a pog of something that's really, really boring, you know, like I've got a pog of a 1970s three-piece suite. You haven't got that, and it made it everything very individual and very unique. So you could bring to school a very unique selection of pogs, and then if you found some of your pogs in the wild later on, that that was something special. But the only ones that I seemed to make was whatever was in the Argus catalogue. So I'd be like, oh, that looks pretty cool, and it's just a picture of a kid playing with a remote control car. Because I was like, oh, that would be cool to have on a pog, but you've got to understand that I was under 10. And I thought those things were cool. But anyway, these are the most important things in 
any of the 90s playground toys. Right, Tazo sort of had it when you know you could build them together and you could find them in packet cri packets of crisps and you they were really greasy. But I think I think it was worth it. I, I think this really shaped me as a child and this probably is why I do have a little bit of a an aggression problem. Not majorly, but I do have a zero te like temper. And that's because you could be thinking that you'd, you'd be winning, and then someone would get one of these slammers, they'd be like, yeah, I'm going to do it, and they'd throw, have an almighty overarm throw, and they would do it. And if they, ca if they caught it just at the right point, sometimes you'd have a massive stack, and it would literally flip them all in one. And that was all. And, you know, that sparked anger, that sparked everything. I, I, I've done it to people, but it usually used to happen to me. And that's how grudge ma matches happen, because I'd be like, right, the only person that I'm playing Pogs with is you until I get my stuff back, and I'm taking your collection with me. Uh, that didn't happen too many times. But anyway, I'm glad that I kind of shared Pogs with you just that one last time, because I was hoping that people don't forget about these, and, you know, if you find any good deals on, on Pogs, or if you've got any that you're willing to sell, just message us on Twitter, or, uh, at Modded Gossip. We're quite active on there anyway. I've been Stu from Modded Gossip, these have been Pogs, and this is going to be a major clear up. Thanks for watching, don't forget to hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit that little bell icon. Thanks ever so much guys, you are the best. I really, I really, really want to be able to do this. How I did it as a kid. How many is there? S uh, seven? Yeah, seven? Come on, don't let me down. I'm determined to do this. I'm determined to get this done. I've been given a fake set. Get rid of this one. I am the king of Pog! I'm actually going to take them with me.